Kubona. Watcher, today I'm going down to Leon C, also Sarfend, to seek out old friends, teachers, officers of correction, Romanes, Teddy Boys, Rascals and Dillicoys, and also my old mum. Well, she's like one of the family. Now stop it. The voices, the bells. I want to revisit the scenes of my bewildering sapling years and to gawk at the south end of now. And I too want to discover quite how I was perceived by my contemporaries at South End High School for Boys and South End Art School, and why I felt the need to join gangs, be one of the boys, be manly, do something proper, have my father be proud of me, and I still do, even though he's been dead for four years. Now, I really don't think I'm alone in this. All girls are pressured to be girlish, boys will be, and should be boys, and whenever possible, lift heavy things. Oh, no, you crow. I'm very liberal. I listen to Radio 4. I'm so tolerant, I let black people clip my poodle. Sweet Jesus, I'm not listening to this lunatic. Where's Radio 2? I'd rather wake up to Wogan. Now, there's a chilling thought. Wink be dad. Twinkle, yes, Balpean. Where's my camera? <laughs> Hello, Mum. Hello, darling. Um, you used to tell me that I was singing in the womb, is that true? Good gracious me, going back all those years. Well, no, I want to start at the yes, beginning. Yes, you were. And I read in the paper the other day... About it. ...that it's true. Babies do make noises and singing noises. <laughs> You've been singing ever since. <laughs> mm. What was that thing about you told me when the nurse... I was, you were 72 hours in labour and at the end of that they bring... Oh, the, no, we don't want to set, tell people that. Why not? Well, because it's, then you can say, well, it was well, well worth others. it. Of course it is. It's an appalling time to be in labour in, in, in modern times. I mean, yes, it shouldn't, I know. shouldn't happen. Well, you nearly killed me now. That's <laughs> enough of that. They had brought me three babies, two with tiny little heads and you with a great big whopping head and ginger hair. I said, oh, no, I'll have one of those little <laughs> yes, ones. Yes. She said, I'm afraid you're stuck with it. Mm. Did I do anything that struck you as odd? or? Yes, always. You were, <gasps> you were odd when I mean, you were two. We went to Hastings for a holiday. My sister came down, mm. Moya, and we passed a, a, a clairvoyant, and she looked at me and she said, oh, this baby of yours, he's either going to be an actor, or she said, he's going to be an admiral. So I looked at her, I said, how can you tell that? She said, oh, I've got the vibes coming over to me. <laughs> because your pram is sinking and he's saluting as it goes down. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, Moya was with me. She said, oh, that's nice to know. He's going to be a great actor. <laughs> and I said, he is one already. You, what do you mean, he's a bloody yeah. liar? <laughs> South End, then in the 50s, was rather a staid and conservative place, inhabited largely by commuters, office robots performing the bowler and umbrella ballet, like my father. But in the stews and close by the reeking cockle sheds ran tribal law. My grammar school mates had no part of this, but one chap, Pete Wilshire, worked out quite how long it took to dissolve mice in nitric, hydrochloric and sulfuric acids. Of course, I warmed to him, and he was approved by Mum. Viv and I both spoke terribly well, which was to our detriment in those days, because we used to get beaten up for it. I the, had the, mine thrashed into me by my father. Yes. If you spook posh, then you would get on in life. But do you recall the first day at school? Well, I recall it very clearly. I just remember standing next to you. I, was, I mean, we were both terrified in a whole new, very strict, old-fashioned school. And we were both in our short trousers, even though we were very tall. But, <laughs> but I think that uh, the norm bored us. Mm. And even when the art teacher would say, draw a little country scene, you and I would give each other a little look, and we would both be drawing a church or something with gnarled trees and, and yawning graves and... I remember him slicing a cabbage in half with a machete and sticking that in front of you to draw. And oh, I yes. Bored with that. I, I, I just thought at the time what a good effect that would be for a beheading. <laughs> I think, generally speaking, we were very good pals. I had a great admiration. I think we, we, we admired each other in different ways for our differences and... Well, I was naked. <laughs> but one thing I, I do remember, Vivian, just see if you can recall this. I was in the senior chemistry laboratory upstairs and there was a, a device called a Kipps apparatus, which is um, a series of chambers of glass 
which hold acids and various things, but basically it was used to make gases. <coughs> I thought that was your purpose. <laughs> well, you taught me everything I know. What do you mean? <laughs> no, but I remember you came up there one morning and I was just getting prepared to do something. And you said, oh, what's this peewee? Which is, of course, the nickname you gave me. Um, <coughs> I remember you turning the b tap control and some liquid went down onto some ammonium chloride and dry ice and a mass of gas came out which was rather like you get in the old early Peter Cushing films you know but I mean I couldn't turn it off we had to go down to assembly and coming down the stairs was this almost like a piece of fog it was just undulating down the stairs and this mass of gas I mean the whole of the upstairs was just full of, of fog you could just see a hand in front of your face Now, Mr. Wyatt, shall I call him Sir? Will he thrash me for old time's sake? Oh well, here we go. You did cause me considerable concern. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Not so much because uh, that you were vicious. You certainly weren't vicious. Mm. In fact, you were rather what I would call cherubic. A round-faced, freckle-faced, ginger-haired lad, weren't you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Pleasant to look at. <laughs> no, 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 this pigtail and fancy glasses like you've got now. And I remember one morning there was a sudden hush, and in you came. Now, the school uniform, you remember, was grey trousers, black shoes, white shirt, house tie, and green blazer. And you appeared in the doorway with black and white check trousers, black and white shoes, a white coat, and a bow tie. <laughs> it's made a lasting impression. So, on was my I mind. wearing my school cap? Uh, no. Not indoors. No, no not indoors. No. And I remember I got you by the scruff of the neck and the seat of the pants mm. and forcibly ejected you out of the door and said, Go home and change and come back. Mm. I don't know. I didn't <laughs> see you anymore that day. <laughs> um, we didn't have many eccentrics at school. The system wouldn't allow it, would it? Mm. And you were, let's face a it... A stiff conservative school in many respects. And an eccentric, a very pleasant eccentric. We've had other eccentrics at the school, mm. but I think you're the best. I, think I don't know you, quite how to take that. <laughs> mm. In some years afterwards, when you were running your band, mm. we had boys at school that thought you were the most eminent of the, all the old South Indians. <laughs> <laughs> Imagination but you went man. to the art school for us, didn't you? Do you have the foggiest idea why it was that I was um, booted up? I out? haven't... I don't think Francis mm. Price, the head, I can imagine. <laughs> we, <laughs> didn't didn't we didn't hit it off. No, no. no. Your father had been up to see the headmaster at the grammar school mm. to ask him if he'd let you leave and he said no. He said he's got to learn discipline. So I went up after he'd gone to the office. I thought I'll have a go at that headmaster. So I went up to see him and I said to him uh, if he went to the art school I said he'd be all right. I said he's wasting his time here. I said all he wants to do is draw. Well when I, your father came home in the evening, I said, uh, I've got him into the art school. He said, how did you do that? I said, oh, I just managed it. <sighs> I was wondering... Uh, it's amazing what eye heels can do. Yes, I, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Because <laughs> I was only just about 40 mm. then. <laughs> Reeking of perfume. Uh, so anyway, uh, and, and, and the headmaster, he was a walkover. <laughs> <laughs> You're a shocking woman. <laughs> We are pootling along the seafront betwixt Leon Z. Chalkwell on our way to South End. The sea is oyster coloured and a little choppy today, but nonetheless bracing for all that. Oh, we're approaching the pier from which I used to swim 
there was a, um, a yearly swim at seven miles from the pier to Leon C cockle sheds. And I suppose 50 or 60 people used to set off, and there were very rarely more than a dozen that finished the thing. Because you have to pass an undersea river called the Ray. That knocks out a good half to two thirds of them. I really like to row my boat where the polystyrene floats, where oil curdles purple, green, and marbly, gaily swimming where I please, across the briny lavatories, plunge right in the water's really lovely, <laughs> hardly. There were tremendous fights on the pier when I was in the gangs. If a team was coming down from Dagenham, then the whole of the pier entrance and right up South End High Street, there would be guys in, you know, pink and blue drape jackets and fighting boots and what have you, waiting for these teams to come down. And remember, with, there was a concert in the, in the pier pavilion, and Wee Willie Harris was coming on, and he came out of the curtain to, I don't know, launch into Lordy Miss Claudie or, or similar, and a bottle missed his head and he disappeared. We never saw him again, whereupon the fighting began. Very exciting stuff. Thrilling. Spiff shop and spiky boy, slide boots off the street. Bought a slick and sharky boy, all spruce and sporty. Do -do -do -do. Got clothing to match my clothing. I got shoes to match my shoes. I'm plonked here before a, a glass of sparkling water in the, in the crooked billet in the old town Leon Sea with an old chum, Ozzy Elvin. And um, we're just going to have a yatter about how things were. They were young and strutting our stuff. And uh, you were known then as uh, either Big Red or Splinge. Hmm. I started running around the Lee Gang, which you would have no part of. Yeah because on the streets of Walthamstow to speak like this, which is pretty much how you spoke in the gangs, whilst at home I had to speak like this all the time. And this was a battleground. Well, uh, up until the flyover was built, this mm. was a completely separate Sealed off here. Oh, yeah. community. And it was mm. rough down here. And it was very tribal. So you had a Lee gang, a South End gang, a Benfleet gang, and Candy boys and so on, who would fight each other. Do you know what happened to Buller Page? No? Pretty. Vanished. Mm. He was the first kid to have a Mohican haircut, and, I, and, he, and he, he came up to me while I was shopping with my mum. He was like, Oh, shine away. Oh, right, shine away. My mum turned around and said, You silly little boy, and punctuated this by thrashing him over the, the Mohican head into the gutter. <laughs> um, Shall we have another drink? Oh, why not? Do you fancy a bag of Welks, old bean? Welks? They're my favourite. Let's go for a plate right now. <laughs> What's happening, nothing? What's happening, nothing? What's happening, nothing? What's, what, what's happening, nothing? Which is, uh, sadly, this, the Kurzel has been pulled down. That was a, one of the biggest amusement parks in the country. And I started along the seafront here, first collecting the pennies from the slot machines until I became a, a bingo caller. But the Kurzel was almost a full-time job because I did in there oh, the dodgems until eventually I got onto the, the water chute. And in the winter of the Kurzel, I would paint the carousel horses and the ghost train. So that was really an exciting job. I'm told that the castle is now a listed building, and I'm quite right too, because it has an, an antique fin de siècle charm about it, with a grey and pig's kidney coloured colonnade. Then there's quite a, a lofty dome atop that, with a kind of mosquish top. A pleasure dome. It does say on the front of the castle, this is a dangerous building, please keep out which is the antithesis of what we used to shout when we were barking on the front to get the um, punters in. And it's very disappointing. I'd rather have kept that in my uh, memory. I've not been back here for 30 years. 
sad, really. Hmm. Well, I'm about to make a ruddy fool of myself. I'm uh, about to go into Mr. B's prize bingo and call the numbers for a game, which I've not done for a, hmm, about 35 years. So this is going to be both embarrassing and interesting. <laughs> hey ho. The producer made me do it. Jungle jive. Lethal enforcers. <laughs> this is a neon nightmare. Look at that. They've got one, two, three punters. <laughs> Oh, uh, my name's Vivian, and you are? Meet Gregory. Meet Gregory, yeah. I used to do this 30, 35 years or more ago. When I was about 15, yeah. How's he getting the balls? Are they running down? Oh, I've got the balls now, Mo. It's all, it's all random number generated. Yeah, balls have long so since gone. Just watching a screen? He's just watching a screen, yeah, punching a number, and a number comes up, and he shouts it out. Right, Easy peasy. Well, can you conduct me around there, please, yeah, Meg? Here goes, eyes down counting, on the blue, 47, one and six, she's old enough, on the red, 16, on the yellow, 37, she's past it, on the, <laughs> on its own, number one, Kelly's eye, Two and six, half a crown. Twenty-six. Seven and six, was she worth it? Oh, that's seventy-six. Eight and eight, two fat ladies. Eighty-eight. Is anybody sweating? I'm lucky for some, thirteen. Three and oh, a blind thirty. Twenty-one, key of the door. Sweet 16 and it's legal. Clickety click, 66. House! Is anybody sweating? <laughs> He had a lot to put up with with you. Now, don't you say anything about him. He wanted me to be a barrister. He, th he thought you would be, because he mm. thought you were clever enough, which you were, but mm. your mind didn't go that way. Mm. He wanted you to be a footballer. Mm. And you didn't, you weren't interested in football. He never, ever reconciled himself to me. He had no idea, he just didn't understand me, did he? I can yeah. tell you something. Go on, then. He loved you, even though you never thought he did. Well, why didn't he show it, do you think? seemed to me that the only time he tried to make any contract with me was on his deathbed when he was whispering to me. Yeah. A lot of men are like that. They love the babies, but when they got to boys and they see the wives giving nearly all their time to them, they get a bit jealous. There's no denying, they just do. And then they, they lose interest in the children, you see. I mean, it just seems as though your father didn't give a hoot for you. Oh, no, he did. Yes, well, it would have been... For me, it was... But he didn't um, show it none, that's all. Yeah, but I mean, a bit of encouragement when I, you know... Yes, but he used to say to me after that. you'd gone... Well, that's not good, is it? I mean, I had to come down to visit you, and he'd say, when are you leaving? As I walked <laughs> in the door. He really would. What time are you going back? <laughs> well, he used to say to me, how long is he staying? Yeah. But um, he didn't really mean it. <laughs> if you had the wit to realise what you could do with your potential, if you had the wit to realise, you could be like me. You could be a barrister, a sergeant, pontiff, or a politician. Yet you choose to be a parasite, embarrassment to me. You horrid little shit, I gave you life. Is this the way that you repay me? Oh, yes, indeed, you'll rue the day. Don't say I didn't tell you so. If he had the way to realize what he could do with his potential, if only you would try, I'd swell with pride, cause you would be like me. We're on our way to see Mary, who is a lady now, uh, not that she wasn't then, uh, that I'd known since I was 15, and um, was insanely in love with her for years. It may be a bit of a surprise, I do hope she's a boiler, 
or enormously fat and matronly. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Would you allow a little Jesus to enter into your life? <laughs> you look like nothing else in, or anybody else that I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, by God, he's attractive. I think you just look so different. He used to wear wonderful clothes then and lovely colours and things and berets and a funny smock and had a horrible old bone shaker bicycle. Mm. You used to pick me up from school on. <laughs> yes, that's right. And the nuns didn't like it, and I was banned from going out at lunchtime. <laughs> and then you invited me to tea at your house. And your mother did this, <laughs> what? this strange tea of little tiny sandwiches mm. and called you oh, the Anthony. The, the crust cut off. Yes, mm. and called you Anthony. And I kept looking around for this person mm. and then realised it was... You. Mm. And then her personality changed because your father suddenly walked in the room and the whole house went very quiet and I didn't like it very much then. Mm. So I didn't go when he was there. It was weird, wasn't it? Mm. I, I don't know what the hell we did because we couldn't afford to go anywhere very flash. Well, you never had we any go... money and I certainly didn't have any money. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, yeah, we used to walk a lot along the seafront in Old Lee and then Chalkwell out on the sand, mm. things like that. But mm. I don't remember that we were that much on our own, really. We just used to sort of turn up like the proverbial bad penny, didn't we? Mm. And ho hover on the corner mm. by the tennis courts. You were asked to go away from there by our PE teacher. Was I? <laughs> yes, because you were standing right up to the thing like that and trying to attract my attention and waving. And she suddenly turned round and said, huh, there's a pervert in <laughs> there. <laughs> and stalked across and told you to go away. Yeah. I just said, oh, it's all right, I know you. I know, I know that pervert. <laughs> <laughs> He's harmless, really, I said. <laughs> yes. It was great fun. It was never, ever a dull moment. I can honestly swear to that. I saw Mary Greco last night. Oh, you, did you? you remember her? Yeah. 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 Mm. Mm -hmm. Did she send her my love? Mm. Yes, she did. <laughs> That's a laugh. <laughs> mm. I remember Mary, because you said you were going to get married to Mary. So Mary came in, and she sat with your dad. And I said to her, will you come out into the kitchen? So she came out, and I said, you can't possibly know what you feel about him yet. You were potty about her, I do know that. But you had to stay at the art school until you were 22. Mm. And I said, he can't get married until he's graduated from that school. So she said, uh, oh, well, I want to get married. She said, now. So I said, well, he can't. I said, his father won't have it, and I won't have it. And I said, and do you really love my son? She said, oh, yes. Oh, I do love him, she's going. I said, well, then you'll have to wait, because if you love him, you'll wait. You'll want him to graduate. So she looked very disappointed over this, and I put my foot down and said, no. I said, he doesn't have my blessing. He's got to wait. And I knew that you wouldn't go against me. You never did. Well, I would have done. No, you wouldn't. But she decided otherwise. I just didn't believe you, and that's the, the bottom line. I just remember being madly in love and reverent. I didn't think you were serious because I'd... Rot, you didn't think I could get anywhere. Oh, come on. I was never mercenary. It didn't matter to me that you didn't have two eightness to rub together. Mm. Did it? But I just didn't take you seriously, ever. Mm. Because you used to disappear out of my life and then suddenly turn up again. And then we'd go out to the pub and things. Mm. But I just didn't think that you felt as you did. Do you remember that joint, joint I, I rented in Primrose Hill? Yes, mm. but I still didn't believe you. Oh. oh, I bawled my eyes out for a week and I thought, sod you, I'm going to get my degrees. You weren't outside the church, though, were you? No. No. 
you asked me to marry you and I didn't believe you. And I met someone else and that was it. I saw a program about you on television that came from the boat that you had in Bristol. Mm. And I didn't recognize you at all. And you were totally incoherent. And then the boat sank. That was the last I heard. <laughs> and uh, I thought maybe you'd gone down with it. With it. it. <laughs> yes. oh. We are treasures. Yes. You're not going to leave me anything in your will then. <laughs> your heart. <laughs> Isn't that sad? A delicious memory. Yes. Just tinged with a rosy tristesse. Have the confidence, the courage, or the common sense, the hoods bar or some happiness, then I could face the future. If I could find a kindred spirit, wouldn't mind a friend to share it. I'm the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. All that second best in me is crying out for sympathy and nagging insecurity is begging me, don't try. If there were an easier way of magic I could try For someone else to do this thing for me Then fear must say it's prayers tonight Sanctuary of the studio, Brainwashing House, London. Well, there you have it, or a part of it. Behind me, you hear the uplifting clarinet of Rodney Slater. I met and roomed with Rod during my first year at Central School of Art, and between us we devised the Bonzo Dog Dada band. He refuses to talk, but let his haunting and lyrical licorice stick speak to you. Do have an unusual day. Toodaloo.